I find that a lot of the very influential ideas in modern society, whether that is the idea that there's an epidemic of violence against black people on the left, or this idea that diverse multiracial societies don't generally work on the right, which has been false since Rome, and you see that demonstrated in the island states and so on today. I mean, many of these ideas have no basis in reality. They come out of that zone of sort of qualitative philosophy. They find an audience that enjoys them, that thinks they make sense. And so you get a great deal of almost hysterics in a space where there's not much going on. I mean, the thing that pushed me to recognize this more broadly was uh, I was arguing with one of my boys, is how I'd phrase it. We were actually in a barbershop. We were talking about how many black men and poor white men are shot by police. Um, and I said, if you're talking about unarmed guys, it's got to be, you know, under 200. It's got to be a very small number. And he thought it was substantially higher and was, was using math, was saying, well, there are 350 million Americans, there are 25 million police stops each year. I mean, it, this has to be in the thousands. I mean, in Britain, they don't use guns and they kill, you know, X number of people. And I actually just went to the database Killed by Police, which is set up by kind of left-leaning but very skilled quants, www.killedbypolice.net. It's been online for years before the WAPO. And I looked up the number of unarmed black men for that year. And if we're talking at 2015, I believe it was 12. I mean, whites, uh, it was 50. You know, and obviously there are people that are shot by police while they're attempting to shoot a police officer or something like that. But that that just sort of made the point. A lot of these things that we fear aren't really real. And I guess in terms of like who influenced your music kind of question, uh, Barry Glasner, the sociologist at, I believe, UCLA, wrote a book in 1999 called The Culture of Fear. And he did this not in terms of political phenomena, because, again, he's a soch guy, but just the things that terrified people. And I got the impression, without intending to criticize him, that he had sort of an upper middle class wife that was very worried about some of this. Because he <laughs> looks at like young child kidnapping and then like teen sex and then like plane crashes and, you know, all the all the stuff that, you know, a dad in the suburbs would worry about. But like one of the lines from his book is that he's one of the first people to point out that there were there are only about 150 to 200 kids that are actually kidnapped in a typical year. Uh, as in taken from home by someone other than like the estranged father who's going to do a good job at them, like an actual pedophile or something like that, and kept for more than a week. The reason that this became such a source of panic for people, and especially perhaps for women, for female Americans in the late 90s, was that you had a television fight between Fox sort of beginning TNT to attract viewers to this new space cable. And one of the things that they found was that people would watch any program where they talked about a young girl being stolen away. And that this is also the period of time that produced Amber Alerts and all this kind of thing. So this became constant in the news, but in fact, almost no kids were being kidnapped. There'd been a decrease in kids being kidnapped since the violent, turbulent 60s with the race riots and the growth of drugs and so on. And the same thing with all this other stuff. I mean, for plane crashes, the, the total number of people killed of American or British origin in plane wrecks in a typical year is, I might be a little off on this, but about 50 animal attacks. He literally goes through all of this stuff. What are your chances as a heterosexual, white or black man of dying of AIDS? I mean, they are not high. I remember that terrifying me in high school, actually. Um, in the urban USA, there was an incredible focus on this idea that there's going to be what was called the heterosexual AIDS epidemic. We're all going to die of AIDS. And I remember as a young male, somewhat absurdly, I didn't stop, you know, hooking up with people. But I worried about all this other crap, like, what about mosquitoes? Could they give me this disease? And Glaster makes this point that, you know, there are very specific hard drug users, for example, among heterosexual men, groups that are likely to die of HIV. Your odds outside of them are extremely small. Anyway, I, inspired by that, was very interested in the same thing today. So the book Taboo looks at sort of 10 of these things that you're not supposed to talk about really in dinner party conversation, but that are kind of influential, where people assume the baseline, as we would say. So, I mean, one is, um, is there a massive conflict between people of African descent in the USA and cops? Are there, as BLM has said in the past, thousands of brothers killed in a typical year? Uh, chapter two is, is there a great deal of interracial crime in the first place? We see, we see this, again, on both left and right, where 
on the one hand, you have these constant stories about pool party Paula, you know, coupon Carl, you know, pool patrol Pete, all these people that seem to be fist fighting with black people at the slightest provocation. And then on sort of the alternative right, you have sites with names like White Girl Bleed a Lot that literally add up all of the black crimes in a state or a region against white people in a typical year. So I looked at how much uh, interracial crime there actually was. And the book goes on with some of this stuff. Empirically, do we find that there's extraordinary white privilege if you adjust for social class? And this idea of adjusting for things is something I'll come back to. But, you know, do we find that immigration can be managed? Are there certain groups that tend to do better, not along racial lines, but professionals and so on, in their new country than others? So the whole book looks empirically at these broad statements like, no human is illegal, and tries to figure out what the actual reality is. And, I mean, just very quickly on the interracial crime one, that, again, is an area where I was kind of shocked. Um Interracial violent crime between blacks and whites, being kind of specific, there's about 3% of crime. So in a typical year, there are about 20 million crimes. You can find this by Googling what's called the BJS report, the Beru of Justice Statistics report for that year. 2019, I believe, just came out, just dropped. And in a typical year, there are about 20 million of what I'd consider real serious crimes, not misdemeanor weed charges and the like. But, I mean, either the most severe property crimes like burglary with someone in the house or violent crimes. Um, so out of those 20 million crimes, in the most recent year on record, there were about 600,000 crimes that were violent and that had either a black perp and a white victim or a white perp and a black victim. So that's that's three to four percent of crime. The even more taboo portion of this, by the way, is that we, quote unquote, were responsible for about 80 percent of that. So there is much more black on white crime than white on black crime. Um, the media never discusses this, but I mean, even that I don't think is an extraordinarily important point because again, you get back to 3% of crime. If you look strictly at violent felony assaults, I believe 15% of those against whites were committed by black people and black people make up 14% of the US population. And in reverse, it was pretty much the same. 11 to 12 percent of these assaults on black people were committed by white people. Again, we had the higher rate of this, and there's no reason to deny that. But the person most likely to kill you is your ex-wife. So again, there's the distinction between <laughs> reality and fear. Fear is, I, I think, 10 fighting men from the other race will jump out of a van and do me in. And I mean, the, the reality is, you know, are you throwing raves or something? Like, if not, the odds of that happening are, are, are you in the mafia? The odds of that happening as an ordinary dentist or something are extraordinarily low. What's going to kill you is, you know, an unsatisfied spouse or the cholesterol in your diet. So the book is funnier than that. I don't devote a lot of time to the cholesterol in your diet. But we do point out some of these things.